am so proud. Oh, thank you. I am you. so proud of Ooh. you. Congratulations. We had you walk out to Bruce Springsteen's yeah. Born to Run uh, because yeah. your opponent, Joe Crowley, dedicated a rendition of the song to you after your victory, yeah. which was incredible. Um, did you have any idea that you would win? You know, I spent the last year and a half knocking doors just thinking about 8.59 p.m. on Tuesday. Wow. And I had no idea or preparation for anything that would happen after that. Mm -hmm. I just figured I'm gonna work as hard as I can and just leave it up to the universe. So I think I was just, yeah. I was just so surprised. I was so shocked, you know, walking in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wasn't even checking on my phone. I was so nervous. Wow. And then I, so walking in was literally the moment I had, I had seen the results. And so. here you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the youngest woman ever elected to Congress yeah. if you win. And in your campaign video, you said, women like me aren't supposed to run mm -hmm. for office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why did you run? I ran because I felt like we could do better and that we could be better as a country. And I looked around. Yeah. And um, we hadn't had a primary election in 14 years in New York 14. Mm. So it was clear that no one else was going to be doing this work. And I figured, you know what, if no one else is going to do it, and if I feel like we can be better, then that means it's my responsibility to do something. And I just want to mention, and I think people should really know this, when you did win, a lot of people said, this 28-year-old bartender who mm -hmm. isn't qualified, mm -hmm. you went to Boston University, mm -hmm. you studied economics and international relations, mm -hmm. you worked for Ted Kennedy, mm -hmm. you worked for Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. you've been a political activist, all while also bartending. Yeah and helping your mother because your father passed away. Yeah, that's so exactly right. people should know that. Your win sent shockwaves basically through the Democratic Party. They did not expect it. No. Um, they spent a hundred, how, many, how much money did they spend on Crowley? A lot. Um, I mean, it was definitely well over $3 million. And what did you spend? Uh, you know, for the lion's share of the race, the very end, there was a lot more small dollar donations coming in. But we had about 300,000 up until like those very end days, and wow. then things really started surging. Okay, so there's quite a discrepancy in the yeah. amount of money that mm. the Democratic yeah, Party put to behind one. him. Yeah. So do you think that that shows the Democratic Party at the moment does not get it? They don't understand to back people like you? Yeah, well, I think what we're dealing with right now is the dynamics of power. Once someone has power, it is so hard to challenge it, even if you think that that other person was right. So I can't tell you how many times I would talk mm -hmm. to people. People were afraid to even take pictures with me in public because of what that could mean. Wow. And which look like candidates? People? Like like you know local city council members right. and state wow. so the party members. apparatus. Because it was right? a machine. There was yeah. a party apparatus, and you can't challenge the boss because then my job's going to be at risk. Wow. And so uh, there were so many people behind closed doors that said, "I want to support you. I believe you are what's best, but I can't because my job will be at risk." Uh -huh. And there's a lot something. of that going on. It happens yeah. on both sides, trust me. It does, me. Yeah. it does. Well, we've been talking about on the show, I believe there's a fracture in the Democratic Party, and you mm -hmm. consider yourself a Democratic Socialist, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders, correct? Mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi was asked about you, and she didn't exactly give you a ringing endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you didn't exactly give her a ringing endorsement. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the future of the Democratic Party is socialism? Well, first of all, there's a huge difference between socialism and democratic socialism. Democratic socialism, and really what what that boils down to me is the basic belief that I believe that in a moral and, and wealthy America, in a moral and modern America, no person should be too poor to live in this country. That is what I believe. And um, that's what I believe. And so I, I, th I can understand that there may be some divisions. You know, I don't think people wake up in the morning and say, I'm a capitalist, you know? <laughs> and so it's funny that when I win, this is the word that's always so thrown I around. I think Donald Trump wakes up well, with that exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he may. <laughs> But do you think the future of the party is more Bernie than Nancy? I think that, um, you know, I think that for young people, I think the future, here's what I think. I think the future of the party is working class. And I think that what I represent and, and perhaps, you know, Senator Sanders, also Senator Warren, there's a lot of working class champions in the Democratic Party. And I do think that that's the future. But they just so, the word socialism. 
all the time. Well, People I think we should probably save that. that conversation for another time because I'm sure Megan and I would have disagreements on the socialism part of this. But it's about you today mm -hmm. and uh, what you did was really amazing. Your, um, obviously, I come from a different worldview on how mm -hmm. to approach problems, but the, your, your campaign video mm -hmm. was so fantastic. Yes, I wish was. we could have shown some of it. It was yeah. inspiring. It was real. It was relatable. Um, and I really think that that message can be, that is something that's universal. Mm -hmm. You know, we can debate how you yeah. go about those, you know, solving the problems, but, mm -hmm. and I think that you should be really proud. And your mom, I know, is here too. Yeah, she I, is. I'm so there's proud mom. of the fact there. that you have, she's there's right mom. there, right there, mom. Now that's an inspiration yeah. for so many, so many women, and, and not only just women in general, but women of color. So you should be, you should be very, very Thank proud you. of that. So I hear, though, mm -hmm. that you potentially want to run for president one day. Is that true? <laughs> mom, is that true? Is I that don't true? know. I don't know. No. My, mom, my mom tells me that I used to say that as a kid, but it was so, I used to say this on the, on the trail. It's like, it's so hard to run for Congress. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> I can't even imagine how folks like Hillary Clinton or, or Bernie Sanders or any of these folks like run for president. It was exhausting just running in the Bronx and Queens. <laughs> well, if Donald Trump can do it, honey, any, yeah, anybody can. Uh, reach, don't stop there if you don't want to. And people are so excited right now on the heels of your win because there is a hopeful, yeah. aspirational yeah. message you have. But there have been a lot of Trump wins this week. Yeah. He got his travel ban. Mm -hmm. SCOTUS dealt a blow to the unions. We have the um, retirement of Justice Kennedy. What power do Democrats have right now? Yeah. What I like to kind of think about is power in a much broader sense, instead of just who the incumbents in the party are and what they, what they are capable of. I come from the background as an educator and as an organizer. So I believe that our power as a party is in organizing people a mass movement of people. And when we organize people, when we win hearts and minds, then we impact what happens in those chambers. And that's, I think, where our power can really come from. Wow. Thanks to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We'll be right back. Woo!